Welcome to this edition of the First Aid Show. In this edition, this is going to be the first of a series of many videos on the use of tourniquets and hemostatic dressings after the recent ERC changes. The latest European Resuscitation Council guidelines gave the first aider more options with dealing with catastrophic bleeding that cannot be controlled by direct pressure or pressure dressings. We can now use tourniquets and hemostatic dressings as first aiders. There are also other changes in dealing with serous bleeds like the stopping the use of indirect pressure points and we no longer elevate a limb that has got a bleed. The use of elevation and indirect pressure is not recommended now as they have proven to be ineffective in controlling serious bleeding. Elevation of a limb has proven to have no real effect in slowing or stopping bleeding so there's little point in teaching it on first aid courses if it's not effective or if there's better options. That said, we still use the elevation sling for bleeds as it keeps the injury safe and it will reduce the blood pressure a little. Indirect pressure does look effective as you're blocking the major artery, but the smaller arteries are not blocked and these meet up after the pressure point and the bleed will continue. Removing these has also made training easier as there's less to remember with the treatment of serious bleeds. In other films, we'll look at the options available to first aiders with tourniquets and hemostatic dressings, which have both used extensively in the emergency medical services and the military for many years with excellent results. As first aiders in the workplace, you could encounter various inju injuries, but outside the workplace, the chance of a first aider or a member of the public being involved in a serious instance is also present. For example, terrorism, multiple casualty accidents and other serious accidents. We'll not on this course look at standard first aid protocols like scene safety, infection controls, as we assume you do this anyway, but it's worth mentioning that you should initially make sure that you know what's happened and what the person's injuries are so that you can assess them correctly and you do not treat one injury but miss another one.